I hope you enjoyed this short personal Warframe Universe movie. <laughs> As promised, here is the video about my Railjack, a ship you will need to sweat a lot to actually damage it. Fast, powerful and indestructible. I will share with you how to build an awesome ship, get a kick-ass crew, but also where to begin, how to begin, step by step. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of the Railjack and what it gives you in return if you invest your time into this. Besides, I think it's fun. I love Railjack. I can be glued for hours in Railjack missions, solo, squad. Basically, you will be able to handle anything thrown your way. You will need to use your initial Railjack, even if it has no mods on your plexus, no intrinsic points, no guns, only the ones you are given, to fly and do missions. You can play in public mode if you're not the host, the Railjack is going to be the hosts. Gaining plexus modes are through missions. You have Corpus and Grenier fractions, lower and higher ranks as you advance the Railjack star chart. The first thing you need to do even if you don't have the intrinsic points, is go to your gear, place the Omni in your gear wheel, then go to your options and customize key binding to set Omni key. You will need this to teleport yourself back to the ship from anywhere in space. Once we unlock this rank in our intrinsic tabs, you will wish you've done it faster. Of course, unless you like flying the archwing and taking things slowly and cozily, which is totally fine. We'll begin with our ship. It is docked in the dojo. What are our options? This is our Railjack menu. We have capacity, so it is important not to overburden it. You have scrap components and armaments. These are the things you have that you discovered slash equipped. You have the scrap wreckage. These are the items you have in repair and or not claimed yet. And the scrap recovered wreckage basically all the items that are in need of repair. You can sell items from those menus for endo as a bunch if you don't want to sell each individually. For example, I'll sell all MK1s for the endo. But of course, if you're working with some component, you can sell it individually, separately from the menu. Now we will head to our Intrising Points tabs. It is super important to reach all tabs to maximum level, which is the 10th. You will gain pluses outside the Railjack as well. So going on missions is the only way to gain them. Each tab gives you a lot of cool upgrades. Command will open the option to have crew members, elite crew members. If you watch my channel, you'll probably know about Adept. And an option to use them in missions. Use Kuva Leeches you kept alive and didn't kill for weapons. Engineering will give you the option to use Omni in its full potential, better archering and necromech, better and faster forge. You will be able to fix problems on your ship remotely in case you are away and you have no crew members yet or the squad is also away and the ship is empty.
gunnery is great for your arch wing weapons and obviously your railjack turrets, faster cooldowns, wider shooting range, etc. Piloting allows you to fly faster, use boosters, better resource farming on space rocks and debris, speed for your archwing and necromach on railjack missions. Tactical is more for you as a commander of the ship. You can use tactical mods for your railjack, recall yourself with your Omni almost from anywhere outside the railjack, teleport to your crew members, fast travel inside the ship, call for a necromech on the railjack missions, and much more. So I advise not to neglect those tabs. The faster you max them, the more buff your frame and your gameplay will be. Here is an example of how you can fix your fires or electricity problems remotely. So funny thing happened, while recording I stumbled upon Raido who has his Repair, Combat and Endurance plus healing all fives. Uh, it's like one of the most desired uh, configs you can ask for, but of course it's personal opinion, my and my friends. Also at the bottom of each crew member you assign your weapon. If it's a weapon you use now, you can assign it to a member. You can't assign if you have one weapon to three members unless you have like three new cores, okay? Just one weapon per one member. You go to Fortuna on Venus to Ticker. If you still don't have the Elite, you will not see them in the list. They cost resources you get in Railjack missions. Also, if it is a member of a syndicate you help, you'll get a discount. But if this syndicate hates you, they despise you, you will get taxed. The Plexus. Integrated. So my config is based on critical damage for turrets, damage boost for the artillery and hull plus shields plus armor. Sort of a tan tank wise railjack. I recommend you get the mode artillery cheap shot. You could see that I shot my artillery but it didn't waste a shot. Some tips if you're going on a missions, if you sit in the artillery cannon, you click on F and then you can use um, a regular turret instead of just moving around from turret to turret. Also, if you're going solo and you have like four to six cruise ships to destroy, you can locate yourself in a position where most of the enemies are flying as well. Then most, if not all, the cruise ships will come to you instead of chasing them across the space. Another tip when fighting cruise ships, aim at the left or right engine. Don't try to hit the reactor because if you're on a high level mission it will be protected by shields. If you have a good uh, mode config it will be one shot. Same goes for Grunier and the Corpus. Always watch out for the damage absorbing orbs. We will be dealing with them later in this video.
I got six shots from one shot, so kind of a very lucky me. Good mode. <laughs> Battle modes, left to right, cheapest to most expensive energy wise. The most um, used mode for me is Shatter Burst. Good for low level enemies in a bunch, good against the damage absorbing orb and farming. You can shoot it into a group of debris and collect the resources. And we have the Seeker Volley, 25 missiles with a lot of damage, great for high leveled enemies. Note that if you use a battle mode too frequently, it will cost you more energy each time. Either have a frame with tons of energy or be a little patient between the shots. Tactical modes are used to boost your crew or railjack performance in battle. I rarely use them, but if I do, they have to be worth it. I like speed, so third is my preference. Flow burn, it gives your railjack speed boost. Death blossom is good, but uh, because I have turrets that don't overheat too fast, I don't need that mode unless something critical happens. But if you have different turrets, it can be great for you. Squad renew is needed before you get the elite squad. They die more often and it can be very useful. Now we have the components, shields, engines, plating and reactor. I tried them all and I like the Levan and the Vidar for my components. At first you'll have MK1. I suggest you don't waste your time upgrading them or fusing them. Use your time and resources only on MK3. Always check the added buff. My shield has a 2000 shield capacity but 30% regeneration and 1000 percent of energy consumed using battle modes are converted to shields and trust me battle modes on high levels take a lot of energy same goes with the engine it is the maximum speed i managed to get out of the engines 210 i guess it's miles per second plus 1.4 boost speed multiplier Plus, my speed increases by 50% when shields are depleted. My shields are actually co-working with my battle modes, but also complementing my engines. So it's always working like a little Swiss mechanism for me here. Platings are hull and armor. Not much to say here. I have 11k plus hull. 4k plus shields and 2.5k plus armor it speaks for itself i can go make a coffee and return my ship will be fine reactor due to the fact i use my battle mods a lot i boost them with my reactor vidar gives me a 60 percent range and 40 percent duration also, a damage immunity twice as long after a major breach is repaired. It happens when you stand in front of a missile battery for too long on high levels, you will get a critical breach and imminent catastrophe, but then the crew will fix it and you'll be immune, so it's kind of messing with the, their minds, like constantly. The armaments the turrets, the holy grail. Here as well, I tested all and I prefer the Vidar Epoch and Vidar Pulsar. They don't overheat fast, they give a pretty good performance, they destroy, what else do I basically need? You have plenty of junk, you need plenty of resources to repair all of them. You can inspect it, but you don't have to repair it, if you don't like the item. As you can see, we're gonna have a little bit of an um, example here. I have two similar turrets. In this case, they both uh, are hit damage, both less than 60%, which is the max. Let's say I like them and I want to make them 60%, actually upgrade them to make them better. After we inspected, repaired and claimed, I will take the turret and click Fuse. Choose the other turret I want to fuse it with and see what it offers me. I can fuse until I reach 60% and I can change the bonus status to my liking. If one is electricity and the other one is heat, I can choose one of them. This is how you upgrade your turrets to be even stronger.
The Tyco sticker is the turret that you use when clicking the middle mouse button. It's not the artillery. Okay, great. So, mm, some of you may be um, asking yourself, where do I get the initial basic stuff besides going uh, on missions? At the same place, dry dock, you have two terminals. One is the railjack menu and the other one is the research lab terminal. Here it is. So you get the basic stuff there. You can research, you can get the research. You can use this one. Let's say you have crew members and you're cruising solo. You need to destroy the missile battery. You can choose a member, it can be one with piloting skills, but it can be one without any skills in piloting, and place him as your pilot, but only after you leave the ship and get away, otherwise he will drag you with him as if your cape, imaginary cape, is stuck in the door or something. It's annoying, so just go away a little bit, click on L, give him his uh, assignment. You are the away crew, they are the railjet crew. 97% of the time they will get the job done. You'll need to have a little patience though. 3% is when you see that it's been too long and they are busy with something indefinitely. Then you need to intervene and do it yourself. But most of the time it's good. Here, you can see that the first time it took him around 12 seconds. Second time it was a bit longer, but he did the job. I suppose maybe he was busy shooting some immortal turret outside, so, you know, sometimes the, the crew members or the specters, they get stuck on something and then they will just not leave it until you intervene. It took him a long time, around 40 seconds, but yeah, he made it. So I didn't need to leave the missile battery, I just stayed there and found some kind of ways to entertain myself. Remember the key binding we talked about for your Omni? I'm gonna show you through the gear wheel, but basically you just click on the key. And it teleports you back to your railjack. I left those guys and they probably flew and got striked by the missiles, but as you can see, even after all of this, my ship is still fine. It had like... 2.5k life and the shield was always recharging itself. So, simple. My tank is indestructible. I'm sorry, like, okay, it's indestructible. We will go and explore the anomaly. It is more for the beginners because it was very relevant when the update of the new war came out. You could also farm Shidu parts here, but they are falling on other missions now. And also you'll farm anomaly shards that you can pay with for um, Tenebrous Euphemera and other kind of sentient scenes from Little Duck on Fortuna. I'll leave you the uh, option to explore the exotic goods. Okay, take it away from here. A few more things before we finish. I think I kind of covered everything, but if you are new to Railjack and you're pretty clueless of how things work, here are some tips for you. I'm gonna show you how to destroy cruise ship, uh, two ways for Grenier, two for Corpus, how to destroy the security nodes on Corpus ship fast, and another really important tip, I think, is always place your engineer first. The most left one because if real players will join you they will move your crew starting from the left so if you have two real players you will still have an engineer
Their crew ship has a shield. It rotates to always face your turrets. But there is a little mechanism that holds this thing together. Quick reaction will get you behind the shield to destroy it. When it is down, shoot it with artillery. Always shoot, as I said, the left or the right engine, not the middle. Don't look for the reactor. If you decide to skirmish it, and after you've taken down the shields and you broke down his engines, he's immobilized, you exit your whale jack and you go to the ship. The door is between the two engines at his rear part. So once you're inside, you need to deactivate three terminals and then wait until the reactor comes up. Destroy the reactor and go back to your whale jack either teleport yourself using Omni if you already have that or escape In order to quickly destroy the security nodes on the, uh, let's say, the mother ship, if you have shutter burst, just fire it at the ship. Usually one shot is enough to cover the needed area. Same idea goes here, on high levels the cruise ship may have a yellow shield around it. It has three reactors, two on top, one at the bottom. Shoot them down to take down the shield. Break its engines so it cannot escape. Then either use the artillery or board it. The reactor is outside but it is protected so you need to deactivate the shield first and then shoot the reactor. I believe that if you kept watching until this moment, you will have the knowledge to build an awesome spaceship. Perhaps you like other types of turrets, it's up to you. But I wanted to share my config so that players will not feel discouraged and we will see more space pirates out there. I hope you find this video useful and helpful. I truly believe that if DE could add more options to railjack missions, like four railjacks against a horde of hundreds, uh, that would be amazing. But, well, I am content with what we have right now. I thank you for joining my video. I invite you to join my channel. I have plenty of tips walkthroughs, 
weird experiments, many more to come. So subscribe to the channel, click on the bell so you won't, you won't miss it. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Maybe I missed something, maybe you have some other ideas, maybe you have a better tank and I'm not aware of. I'd like to hear it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!